Hello, and welcome to another Cause Bad Guys Tactical Breakdown. Today, we're going to go over The Flash for Night Models Batman Miniatures game. This version of The Flash is Barry Allen, and I think uh, this version is also from the comic books, so not from the TV verse or the uh, movies. This is purely from the comic books, and he looks very similar to the New 52 uh, version in the comic books. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in to the fastest man alive, Barry Allen, The Flash. So Barry Allen, The Flash, can only be taken for the Batman crew as a sidekick. So as a sidekick, you can actually take him as the boss for the crew, so he can be considered your leader for your team. He doesn't have any weapons to speak of, so that means in combat is the only way he's going to be able to hurt anybody and it's only ever going to be one stun which sounds bad but at the end of the day this guy isn't a bruiser he's not somebody that you want to be in combat but he can take out a henchman or two for sure so let's go ahead and go over his stats so he is willpower 8 which so far willpower 8 is the highest that any model is in the game uh, willpower 8 means that this guy is not going to be wanting for action counters. He is going to be able to do the things that you want him to do in a turn. He is then strength 4 plus, movement 5, attack 3, defense 5, and endurance 7. So strength 4 plus, that is uh, kind of average for a sidekick. Uh, 3 plus would be better, but 3 plus on this guy would be pretty broken. Uh, so movement 5, he's a speedster, so of course he's going to be super fast. Movement 5 is going to just play into his personal traits. Uh, this guy is very, very fast. Attack 3, it's a little disappointing, but he's, like I said earlier, he's not a bruiser. He's not meant there to like do damage. He is an objective grabber. That's what his speed is for. He zips around the board and does those kinds of things. Defense 5, this makes him awesome. Because now guys, if they try to shoot at him, they're going to be hitting on 5s and 6s. And on the off chance anybody actually gets into base contact with him, they're going to be hitting on 5s and 6s. So his defense being this high is great. And then Endurance 7, this makes it so on those off chances those random attacks actually hit you you can soak up a few of those before you start uh, having to worry about this guy all right let's go ahead and go on to personal traits let's start off with speedster six so speedster means that his base movement instead of being 10 is actually 15. he uh, speedster also means he gets to ignore uh, difficult terrain uh, any obstacles that might be in the way, uh, he just ignores those. It also means that he can climb walls without having to spend a movement counter. Uh, so he can run up the side of a building, which is great. Uh, it's awesome for him. Uh, and then the number means that during the uh, speed force phase, he can pull six counters out of the speed force pool. Uh, this also plays into him being a Speed Force Master. So Speed Force Master means that he can use two powers a turn instead of one. So him having the uh, six tokens means that he can actually capitalize and do uh, two different powers that can either complement each other, so doing speed uh, stuff to be zip around the board even faster, or combat stuff that all go over later on in the video and show you guys how I use this guy. So the rest of his personal traits. So next he's got detective, which uh, which means you get to re-roll the dice for riddle markers. Uh, and then you also get to negate a pass that your opponent has if you outnumber them. Uh, this can be pretty essential for this guy because the Flash, the more I've played with him, the more I've found that he's one of the last people on your team that you want to activate, or if not the very last, because you want him to be sitting on an objective at the end of the turn. 
Next is dodge. So dodge is the ability that makes it so you can dodge bullets, so you can dodge ranged attacks. Uh, and this plays into his movement being five. So for every movement counter, you can dodge a ranged attack by rolling five or less, which is going to be almost all the time. He almost never gets hit by ranged attacks as long as you have movement counters to be able to dodge stuff. He's then also fast, which I don't know why a uh, speedster wouldn't be fast. Fast makes it so you can re-roll those extra movement counters for when you move during your turn. It comes in handy, makes it so this guy's almost never coming up short trying to get somewhere. And let's get on to his last two traits, which are both weaknesses in my mind. Uh, so the first one is scientific, which makes sense fluff-wise. So he's a scientist, he's a forensic scientist. And scientific makes it so his special is actually four instead of three, but then it's also a detriment because if he's ever casualtied at the end of the game, your opponent gets another victory point for him being scientific which makes sense because he's one of the cornerstones to the Justice League outside of the Trinity, obviously, but he is a major player in the DC universe and being able to take him out should be worth more points. His next trait that's also a detriment is moral compass, but this rule is also very fluffy because he is the heart and soul of the Justice League. He makes sure that nobody uh, goes outside of the rules, doesn't uh, kill anybody and stuff, and that's exactly what Moral Compass does. It means that you can't use the coup de gras special rule, so if somebody's knocked out, you can't beat them to death, which the Flash would not be okay with. You make sure that you arrest people, and this is already part of the Batman crew, so you have a ton of cops that already have arrest, so it's not really that big of a deal. So let's go over his point cost. So he costs 125 reputation. So 125 reputation, you might be thinking, wow, for this guy doing only one stun when he punches people, uh, that's, that's pretty steep. But actually, if you play this guy to the best of his ability and you use him for capturing objectives, you use him to distract uh, opponents like you get him to run circles around Deathstroke or Killer Croc or any of the big baddies that uh, your your opponents will bring. He actually makes up his points uh, in spades. Like he is one of the greatest pieces that I've ever played with. Him being able to run up and down buildings, him being able to use super speed powers like phase through walls, uh, all of that stuff. He's amazing. And then if there's ever any one of those random uh, henchmen that are getting in the way, you can also use two, uh, two speedster powers. To I do this pretty often. I double his attacks, and then I give him the plus one strength. So all of a sudden, he's throwing out six dice counters at strength three. Sure, it's only one stun apiece, but most henchmen, they only have four or five endurance, and that's more than enough to be able to knock him out. So do I think that he's worth 125 points? Absolutely. Totally worth it. And then he has no cash funding because he has no ranged attacks, no guns, all of that stuff. Uh, it's really good to take this guy as a leader to a crew. He frees up those points for SWAT members, for cops with guns, and you also want cops in your crew with this guy because you need a rest because of that moral compass. So uh, let's do weaknesses. I think his only weakness, outside of not being a bruiser, but you shouldn't play him that way, uh, his only weakness is that uh, moral compass, and you can't run a hero heavy list with him because you have to have a rest. Uh, or else you're going to have problems with guys waking up at the end of the game and still being able to do stuff. So you've got to take cops. You've got to have the arrest rule. It's essentially his only weakness. And strengths. I think I, I've like already covered a ton of his strengths. I've, I can't rave about this guy enough. He is so much fun to play, and he's one of my favorite uh, DC characters in the entire universe. The Flash is, he's a badass. He's so cool. And on to be able to play him on the tabletop is so much fun. Uh, so I think his greatest strength is his mobility. He is by far 
the fastest character in the game, and that is even faster than the other speedsters. Because he's a uh, speed force master and uh, is speedster six, it makes him so he is the highest in the game so far. And this is my paint job that I did for my flash. Uh, I really like the way the yellows and the reds contrast, the shading for him. Uh, I tried to paint as close to the night model's paint job as possible. I'm obviously not as good as they are because they can get those skinny little yellow lines, which I wish I could do, but I love the way that he's turned out. Uh, by far one of the funnest pieces to play with, especially as a good guy team. I usually play bad guys, but I'm painting up my, uh, my cops to be CCPD instead of GCPD with a little bit lighter uniforms instead of the really dark navy I'm going with a, a lighter blue uh, I'm trying to hold out for them to make a Detective West but if I don't get one very soon I'm just gonna paint my uh, James Gordon as Detective West and we'll just keep going with the CCPD uh, theme really uh, so that's it for the flash uh, if you guys have any suggestions on uh, more characters, let me know. And remember, cause bad guys.